So I was about to show you how to append, and then I realized there's a way we can do it without using any additional methods. And the way I'm going to do it, I'm going to open the file first. I'm going to read everything and then print it to the file. So I duplicated uh, all that. And if you want to get all the lines, you can do that. New scanner. So it'll be scan dot dot. So I think there's a get all. Where's all the gets or next? For no has next. No, it's not no, not any of the has. It's next. I thought we could get all the lines. Okay, guess not. Well, this will just take a little bit more coding. I thought there was we can get all the lines at the same time. All right, so here's getting the line one at a time. And there's a couple options. Uh, I could use an array of strings, but the problem is we don't know how many lines are in the file. If I wanted to do that, I'd have to basically run this loop twice, once to count up how many there are in there, and then a second time to actually grab them and process them. All right, so I'll make an array list of strings like that. And I got to import, there we go. Uh, so instead of printing these, a dot add, and we'll just add in that line that we get from the file. All right, so instead of printing out that next line, we're just adding it to this array list, and then when we're done looping, we can then put another loop in for string s in a, these are not the best variable names. Uh, let's see. File two, some cool stuff. Let's close the file, which is the scanner. I'm going to close the scanner. Then we'll open the print stream on the file. And then for each, we will add this in. So it's P dot. You probably want print LN because remember the next line removed the return. It removed the new line so that each string that's inside A used to have a new line at the end, a slash N, but this next line basically discards that new line. It uses it, but what it uses it for is to terminate the uh, input. And that's, that's how it decides what a line, where a line ends. It ends at that slash n, which for us just appears like a new line in the file. So we'll close our print stream, get a print ln, and we're going to print s. This ln will add a new line at the end. You could, of course, manually do the exact same thing with this. All right, now we've read everything from the file, closed it, opened up a print stream, which we saw before basically clears out the file. It's gonna overwrite whatever was in there. Good news is we just saved it all to A so we'll fill in all of that back into the file and then we can print some cool stuff and then finally close and now uh, and then it will print out what's actually currently in the file let's go ahead and run save this let's see what's in the file at this moment i don't know why that's not there it is so this is what's in the file right now. I'm gonna delete some cool stuff.
I know it's cool stuff, but that's okay. Save that. Close. Now, we'll see if this works or not. There we go. So we kept all that stuff and then added in at the very end, wherever that is, some cool stuff. Then we closed the file for printing and then we opened it back up one more time for scanning. Of course, we can just use the file explorer if we want to and just double click tacos are good, open it up and see what's in there. So I just commented all this out. So I don't think we'll see anything significant printed on the screen here. We're just going to see what happened. I still have that path, an absolute path. Uh, so now we'll open up that file and see what happened. Now, why do we see this? Because what we just did is we read everything in to that array list, printed that array list to the file, and then printed one more line right there. So here's that some cool stuff, the extra line. If we run this a few times, I probably should close. You probably shouldn't have a file open that you're modifying somewhere else. Uh, that's generally not very smart. I'll run this a couple times and we'll see some cool stuff get concatenated at the end several times right there. So one time for each of the five times I ran it. Okay, so that's one way to concatenate. Now, if I wanted to put this online you know, line two or three, whatever I could in my array list before I ran through and printed it all to the file, uh, I could print out some of them. I'd probably want to for loop with a integer index, but I could just loop three or four times, add in the extra thing I wanted, and then resume the regular for loop. So different ways to append. All right, so now we have the file, we read it, saved it, and then added uh, at the end. And the nice thing about what I have here is you could actually go and so here's the append, by the way. Uh, what am I doing? Print. I don't know why I went through this whole list just to print. Let's just go once upon a time. And now if I run it, it should put once upon a time at the top of the file the original content, and then the, some cool stuff at the bottom. Uh, some of the programs will let you reload. Some of the text editors will let you reload. I don't see that option here. So Notepad is not, not the best text ed editing app out there. Notepad++ is pretty good. Uh, you can also, uh, if you, where would that be? File access. Here it is, tacos are good.txt. You could open it inside NetBeans right here. Uh, but again, when you modify the content of this file somewhere else, most apps will not modify. This is a buffer. What you're looking at is called a buffer. So it's not actually what's in the file at that. At now, it's what was in the file when I double clicked it. Uh, and then if I add stuff here, uh, if I don't save it, this does not this change does not get written to the file so here we go i'm going to discard it